Agriculture remains as one of the most important elements necessary for human survival. I mean, we've all seen post-apocalyptic movies. Food is always one of the things that protagonists have to fight for or defend or figure out how to grow. If you are into the agriculture business and we're going to include all of the backyard gardens and small patches here, then you need to know the produce with the highest demands so that way you can make the most profit for your hard work. Also, that way you can be prepared to trade for other comforts if the world ends like all the movies are always predicting. So today, we're going to be looking at the top 10 demand produce of all time, foodstuffs that you can never go wrong in cultivating. But before we get started, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, as well as hit the post notification bell, so that way you never miss another update from us. Peppers. Even if you don't like spicy dishes, you cannot deny the importance of peppers. They immediately make themselves known in any recipe by adding bright color and taste. There is yellow, purple, green, red, orange, and white peppers. And we can't give any one of them up, which is probably why more than 35 million tons of peppers are produced every year. Peppers are warm season crops, and temperature can be a restrictive factor for growing peppers outside. Its optimum temperature is 18 to 26 degrees Celsius, cold weather inhibits its growth, and they don't recover easily from any abrupt change. You can choose to grow your plant from seeds or from seedlings, but whatever you choose, remember that irrigation and humidity need to be closely monitored. Soybeans. Popularized as an ingredient in many types of meat and dairy substitute meals, soybeans have become essential to our diet. Not just for us, though, they're also the most important protein source for feed farm animals, which in turn yields animal protein for consumption. Like most legumes, they increase the nitrogen content of the soil and so increase the harvest of other crops which are grown in rotation with them. Soybeans are really super crops, and because these tiny legumes love the sun, the cultivation of soybeans is most most successful in climates with hot summers, as temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius can significantly end up stunting their growth. Soybeans, like many other members of the bean family, do require a delicate balance of soil moisture for their growth. The good news is for farmers is that soybeans are rarely attacked by any pests or diseases. Just ensure that you avoid handling them when they are wet or covered in dew, and to keep your planting beds weed-free. With that, you can enjoy your harvest for over 140 million metric tons of soybeans being produced every year. Tomatoes. From sauces to soups, salads to salsas, tomatoes form a huge part of our diet and are so always in demand. Technically, tomatoes are classified as fruits, but what do we know, right? I mean, it's not like we can include tomatoes in fruit salad, except if you're a good adventurer, so we'll stick to thinking of the juicy red fruits as vegetables. Tomatoes are made up of 98% water and are a great source of umani flavor, especially when cooked. With greenhouses, you can literally grow tomatoes all year round, regardless of the season, but you have to watch out for the common tomato attractions like mildew or blight. Tomatoes are commonly planted with carrots, which means that you can have two ingredients for your soups growing nearby. Start your tomato cultivation today, and maybe you can beat Dan Sutherland's record of the heaviest tomato ever produced, weighing in at a whopping 4.8 kilograms. Sugarcane Sugarcane is the world's largest crop by production quantity, with about 1.91 billion tons produced a year. When you think about how much sugar is consumed daily, you can get why this is the case. Sugar is peddled in almost everything, especially consumer produce. Think soda, cookies, and even breakfast cereals. 90% of packaged food has some sort of added sugar as well, and there's about 16 teaspoons of sugar in a bottle of soda. And although we know that too much of the stuff really isn't healthy for us, we just can't resist any sugary treats. Sugarcane is usually grown in the tropical or subtropical climates and does need a minimum of 60 centimeters of moisture, so no, you can't grow this in your small garden patch. From sugar Sugarcane processing, you get sugar and other things such as baggies, molasses, and filter cake. Corn. First of all, let's answer the big question. Do corn and maize mean the same thing? Yes, they are more or less the same. With that being said, corn production has recently passed that of wheat and rice. And why? Well, simply because people are guzzling down corn by the thousands. Most of the corn produced is usually used as an energy source in producing livestock feed and in the manufacturing of food and industrial ingredients, such as corn oil, by fuel and even good old bourbon whiskey. It's quite cold tolerant, so if you're planting in a temperature region, then it's best to do it in the spring. Corn is a beginner-friendly crop, meaning that it's super easy to cultivate. All you gotta do is plant corn seeds on your small backyard patch of land 
and surprise your family and friends with fresh corn straight from the farm. If you want to have fun with it, make sure to plant the flint corn species that has multiple colored kernels on the same cob, rice. With so many yearly rice-baked recipes, it's no wonder that rice is one of the top demanded produces. Rice is a cereal grain and currently ranks as the third largest produced agricultural commodity with about 769.7 metric tons of production. Planting rice is a bit tricky and is not something that you're easily going to be able to do in your backyard. The best traditional method of growing rice involves flooding the fields during or after setting your young seedlings. If you're thinking of large-scale production, rice can basically be grown anytime. All that you need is ample water supply through water-controlling terrace systems. After harvesting, all you gotta do is send the rice plant seeds for milling to remove the shaft, and depending on what you want, produce brown or white rice. From there, it can either be polished, parboiled, or processed into flour, as well as enriching it with nutrient supplements. Potatoes. Now we're going to talk about all sorts of potatoes here, from sweet to russet and all the species in between. To show how in demand that taters are, 370 million metric tons of potatoes are produced worldwide, and we already know the potatoes never go to waste. Chips, mashed potatoes, dumplings, salads, pancakes, just to name a few, and there's so many things that you can do with them. Perhaps that's why the United Nations have declared potatoes as an essential food security crop. Potatoes are root vegetables, which means that they do grow in the ground and you are going to have to dig them up. They are sensitive to heat, frost, and cold weather, which does damage them to the ground and makes them more susceptible to bruising and later rotting. You know what they say, one raw potato spoils the whole bag. It's not just a figure of speech, so ensure that you check every spud before storage to prevent losing the whole batch. Wheat. First off, know that wheat is a grass literally, and the only thing stopping us from throwing it in the trash is its seed, which is what we actually use. Wheat is the principal cereal grain grown in the United States and is the highest trading crop worldwide. That's saying something. Wheat is used in cooking, baking, and flour production, and even the milling byproducts, which are important as they are used to feed animals. There's officially eight classes of wheat, and you can grow any one of them that you want to with the right resources. Due to increasing demand, there's increased competition in the supply of wheat, but this shouldn't stop you from planting those wheat seeds. Wheat planting should generally be done in the late fall or early spring, and it's advised to practice crop rotation and fertilizer use while growing wheat to increase yields of wheat per unit area. Mushrooms. Mushrooms are fungi, and we know that sounds kind of weird. So yes, mushrooms are profitable and in high demand and are especially convenient for urban farmers with little space to work with. An important thing to consider is that mushrooms don't last long after harvesting, but even that can be worked out. All you gotta do is dry them and they can still be sold or used just like that. Many mushroom species seemingly appear overnight, which is where the common phrase to pop up like a mushroom came from. Oyster mushrooms, for example, can be grown in just five weeks and sell for at least $10 to $20 per pound. Mushrooms also do not require sunlight to grow. All you need is fresh wood logs and water and lots of it. If you put in the work, you can get a bountiful harvest of mushrooms for sale or whip a batch of mushroom gelat. We're sure that you're enjoying this video so far, so why not subscribe to the channel already so that way you can be part of the community. Also, hit that notification bell so you always get notified of every new video we put out there. Poultry. Technically, this is not a type of produce, but we gotta add this on the list. What's better than a plate or bucket of spicy chicken? At the end of the day, nothing. The best part about rearing chickens is that you also get eggs out of the bargain, and even the feathers can be used for a myriad of purposes, including jewelry, diapers, composting, or even makeup products. An astonishing 50 billion chickens are reared annually for consumption, with an average individual eating 279 eggs per year. Imagine the number of eggs a family or community community eats every year. Thankfully, if you're cultivating the right breed of chickens, you can get up to 280 eggs per year. A vast majority of chickens are reared in factory farms, but you can also rear them in small chicken coops, provided the necessities like heat and water are provided. And if you don't want to eat them, you can always keep them as pets. There you have it, fellow producers. Thank you so much for watching, and also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, where we give you all the right information that you need. Also, please give this video a big thumbs up, and share it to all of your producer friends. Until next time, we'll see you later, guys.